Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to do a quick video on the data log from my 10 second pass. So I went over all the parts that were on the truck when I did my 10 second pass, but I just wanted to go over some of the data and hopefully it'll help somebody. If not, it'll just be interesting to go over and see how the truck progresses. So here is uh, the HP tuners data log. So I basically have all the gauges and the, so we'll jump right into the log. Uh, my target launch RPM was about 2,500 RPM. Couldn't launch any higher than that because of the, the drum brakes and I'm just using the foot brake. The tires just really started to spin. So I, I just kept dropping the RPM down until it wound up holding. For launching it, uh, it was really surprising that I was able to launch at almost 10 pounds of boost at only 2,500 RPM. So the, the two-step helps build boost a little bit because of the unburnt fuel when it cuts spark, but also I have a spark adder subtractor when in two-step, so I call that a boost builder function. And I have that programmed right into the stock ECU when I'm in launch control. It's a 1D table that adds or subtracts timing based on the manifold pressure. So you can see up here, I have the timing advance. Uh, I'm not giving out timing advance numbers just because I'm a beginner. I obviously have never done this before. This is the first time that I've ever run a 10 and who knows how long it's going to last. So I, I didn't want to give out uh, a tune or, or timing values so that other people, you know, just go out and use the same numbers and blow their stuff up. So to get into the two step, I have to be under a certain speed. I have to be over a certain throttle percentage and I have to be pressing the brake pedal. So those three conditions let me get into launch control and then it will cut ignition over, in this case, 2,500 RPM, I have it set to. Once I hit a few pounds of boost is when I start manipulating the timing. So when I get into, you know, three, four or five pounds of boost or so, I start to pull timing back. So you see this, this timing advance start to pull back and then once I get to my target, I ramp the timing back in and I'm ready to launch. So in this case, I wasn't trying to cut a light. If you look at the time slip, I obviously was not going for a great reaction time. I was really just coming up, I double bulbed and then just matted the gas whenever the lights dropped. And then once I heard that the engine was, you know, building boost, it, I can tell really just by the, the noise that the engine's pretty much ready to go. So right when it's ready to go, I launch, let go of the brake. Uh, converter, you know, flashes up a few, you know, maybe 500 RPM before it grabs. Also in this area, I have another custom function that I'm manipulating timing. So if the brake pedal is the reason that the two-step is deactivated, I go into a time-based timing offset. So it's another 2D table time versus an offset of spark timing to reduce power for the launch. So I'm pretty much shifting at 55, 5600 RPM for the one, two and the two, three shift. And then up here, you can see I'm, I'm kind of pushing the stock engine 5,800 kind of spinning it a little high for stock cam, stock valve springs and all that stuff. I don't think GM ever intended the engine to spin that high. So you can see speed, the vehicle speed isn't perfect. The drivetrain is loading up. So you see a couple little blips of mile an hour. I hit, you know, 122 was the, you know, what the time slip. So 122, 123. So that, that matches fairly well. And then down here I have uh, actual boost because I'm also logging the barometric pressure. In KPA, I'm launching around 160 KPA. Uh, in terms of PSI, that's like 10 and a half or nine and a half pounds of boost. Boost kind of slowly 
kind of ramps up. It really only takes maybe, you know, a second or two to get full boost, which in this case is roughly like 20 pounds. Peak boost, uh, I basically ignore this little, this little jump right there, but 252 kPa. And then up here you could see the air intake temperatures. The temperature this day was fairly cool. Uh, I'll post a picture. I think I took a picture of the local weather. IT jumps up to 97, so hardly anything for this kind of boost uh, and an air-to-air -air intercooler. Um, like I said, the weather was good, so that helped out a lot, but I'm, I was impressed with how low the IETs were on that run. And then down here, you can see I have the wideband in Lambda and then the commanded Lambda as well. Tracked fairly close. There's a couple little rich, you know, rich little spot there on the launch. And then out the back, it went a little bit rich because I really didn't have these high boost above 20 pounds previously running. So I, I didn't get a chance to correct for that yet, but I can pull a little bit of fuel out up there knowing that, that it's a little rich. Again, this is the stock P59 PCM, so there's no kind of, you know, closed loop. This is straight open loop. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it, but you really have to rely on a consistent fuel system and having no mechanical issues because if something were to go awry, this would do absolutely nothing to save the engine. It would basically just go extremely lean and then it would probably melt a piston. And then the uh, orange line EMAP, so it's exhaust manifold pressure. I welded up a little tank and plumbed a brake line to the inlet of the turbine housing. I drilled and tapped and put in a zero to 100 PSI pressure sensor. I just wanted extra data. I also added a, a ratio so you can see the exhaust manifold pressure over the intake manifold pressure. So I'm using EMAP and IMAP or boost intake manifold pressure. And you can see the ratio as we go down, as I go down the track. It is a nice number to have, but really I wanted to be able to have that number for future upgrades. I wanted, one, I wanted to know if the turbo was appropriately sized. And when I do upgrades, I want to know kind of when I'm getting to the limit of that turbo. It's pretty solid at 1.4 to 1 uh, exhaust over intake. So converter slip. So once I'm in third gear, this value is relevant. Uh, you can see that it starts out fairly high and then it starts, you know, to come down as I get more mile an hour. And then you see there's a little dip here and then the RPM drops a very small amount. So maybe 50 RPM because I actually tried to lock the converter. So uh, with this little eBay 245 millimeter, you know, 4L60 converter, I don't know what I expected. My previous converter would lock up and it would hold. It did start to slip towards the end, which is kind of why I wanted to replace it. But this one, no go. It, it did not want to have it. And I, I just kept pushing it because I wanted to try and get this 10 second pass. Probably didn't need to do this because even with it slipping, I did reach, you know, fairly low slip numbers. I'm sure locking, trying to lock it helped a little bit, but I'm just going to wind up turning off, turning off the lock up in the future and just kind of see what kind of uh, mile an hour and uh, ET I can get without it. And then in the future, if I upgrade the trans, uh, I'll probably have to dump a little bit more money into, you know, a billet converter or something. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, like I said, I'm not going to give out timing values or I'm not going to send you guys my tune. But if you have other questions, uh, I thought I would just share this to anybody that would be interested. I also want to end this off with the only video I have of the past was actually a slow-mo video that uh, one of my buddies uh, captured. So you can actually tell that the tire lifts off the ground, but you can't see the times on the tower because of the way that the zoom is with slow motion. But yeah, I'll throw that up here at the end, but we'll see you guys later.